fans of the High Republic show in this room? Can I get it for Light and Life? Can I get a We Are All The Republic? Yes. Start you off with indoctrination. Hello, Celebration, and welcome to the High Republic for Light and Life panel. And welcome to everyone that is watching us on the live stream. For those of you that don't know, my name is Christina Ariel, and I am the host I am the host of The Higher Public Show, and I will be your host for the next hour or so, where we will discuss all things related to The Higher Public. We've got lots of news and reveals, and I say that in lots with all of the capital letters. Shout out to the audiobook people in the room. Woo! Audiobooks are reading. They're reading. It all counts. We did this for all of you. We wanted to make sure that we had sto stories for everyone, um, formats for everyone. We, we were given an incredible opportunity when we started to build the High Republic, which was, you know, we, we could, there were no rules at that point, it was just, figure out the best Star Wars story you could, the biggest Star Wars story you could. And so we we knew that one of the things that we wanted to do from the very beginning was to tell a story that is, was incredibly broad, that had perspectives of, of many, 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 many different kinds of people. The idea right from the beginning was we have all these characters with all these different backgrounds and, and points of view. Um, so we could really nail into these big galaxy changing of events. But what mattered was how they, what they meant to the people, because at the end of the day, that's what Star Wars is. It's about the characters, you know? It's a galaxy made up of people. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it just boils down to Star Wars is for everybody. And if you're not reflecting the people you see in the real world, in your fantasy worlds, there's a problem. And I think it was really great that we're, thank you. Let's clap for diversity. And dinosaurs. And dinosaurs, <laughs> yes. But I just think it's like, that was for me the most exciting thing is because, you know, as a kid, I got Lando. <laughs> and then I got Mace Windu, like Mace Windu was solid. At least he was a Jedi instead of like a guy who was just trying to get into Leia's trousers. I think it's just really nice to be able to include the people I know and love in my life and give them a character that reflects their identities as well. When you're writing something, even if it's, you know, I, I trust the opinions of these people, very, you know, completely about what they think of the work. If they think it's good, it's good. But ultimately, it kind of matters what, what you guys think, too. I would love to show you interior art. However, before we get there, I got one more thing to say about this cover. Tell me. By Kristen Baver. And what does it say under that, Christina? Oh. Forward by Kathleen Kennedy. Forward by Kathleen Kennedy. Fade in. The first thing I said to Mike when we were talking about me being on this panel and getting to share some of this art from inside the book with all of you was, I really want Man Bun Yoda. Can we do that? <laughs> and we can. You see, we did. Now, as far as the characters in these stories, how closely did you work with the artists on creating characters? As you said, we didn't have the canon to pull from, aside from a couple characters like Yoda. You know, Yoda, whatever. I'm sorry, Charles is Yoda, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and sure, Yoda's in it, whatever. And Yoda, whatever. And Yoda. <laughs> Yoda, whatever. I'm, I'm and so not like nice pirate. Charles that says, and Yoda, Yoda whatever. whatever. And, and then also Yoda, um, whatever. <laughs> yeah, Yoda, whatever. Yeah. The droids, 
the extroids. Um, this was something that Pablo came up with in one of our very first um, yeah. weeks in, in, in Skywalker Ranch. Um, when he talked about the Pony Express droids we could have. And that's exactly what these are. Because at this point, you can't beam messages across. You literally have to talk into a droid that goes, OK, I'm off, gets in a little spaceship, and zooms back to the core, delivers the message, go, waits for the message, and then goes back. It's like cell phones in, in, in dramas. You don't want them because they ruin drama, because you can just phone some, someone up. So you try everything you can do to break a phone within the first act. Um, <laughs> that's what we've done here. <laughs> we've broken the entire gal galactic um, communication systems. And those droids are really important. There's video games in development, uh, as we know. Uh, Leslie Headland is currently in development on a live-action uh, High Republic show called The Acolyte. Uh, she's an incredible talent, and um, you know I'm excited for you all to see what, what what she's been doing. Stories that center women as the protagonists, you know, like I do really enjoy that a lot. <laughs> In other comics news, in a few short weeks, it'll be Pride Month. And today, we're excited to reveal the final cover for the Marvel Star Wars Pride variant run in 2022, Lula Talisola and Zine Morala on the cover of Han Solo and Chewbacca number four. We love to see our favorite force-wielding couple from the High Republic era making their Pride comic debut. The cover is just one of seven Pride variants, including Larma Dacey and Roby Tice on Star Wars number 25, Tonga and Losha on Bounty Hunters number 24, Dr. Aphra on what else? Dr. Aphra number 22, Kofan Ferris on Obi-Wan number two, Vi Marathi on The Mandalorian number one, and Sabe, Sashay, and Yane on the cover of Darth Vader number 24. The ending is, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Painful. Uh, <laughs> Michael, what do you have to say about that? That was, that was always part of the plan. Um, pain. You know, we wanted to pain, yeah. <laughs> Death by committee. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. May the force be with you. Impressive. The most impressive.